Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a 15 year old stabbed overnight at a San Antonio apartment complex. Up next, why police say the suspect stabbed him and where that suspect is now. Israel calls for more than a million Palestinians living in the northern part of the Gaza Strip to evacuate within 24 hours. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And trending right now on KSET.com this morning, the San Antonio Police Department suspends a sergeant who told a motorist during a traffic stop, quote, I don't give wife beaters a break, sir. Sergeant Ramiro Juarez Ramos was suspended 15 days after the incident in late May. You can read exactly what happened during that traffic stop online right now. And happening outside right now for some of you, a little bit of fog, mist and drizzle once again this morning, but changes are happening in the forecast later today. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is October 13th. That's right. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th and it's going to get humid again. Uh, it's not as cool as it's been, but we're hoping that that forecast will be cool again. We'll check on your forecast in just a moment, but first we are at the scene of some late, late breaking news gunfire in a west side neighborhood. Now police have shut down a section of North San Bernardo Street not far from General McMullen. Jet Katrina Weber is there live and we understand no people were hurt, but a pet did get hit by that gunfire. Well, that's right. It's a dog that was hit, dog that was in the front yard when the gunfire was sprayed toward a home here. This is the 500 block of North San Bernardo uh, <laughs> near General McMullen, and this is where police are working here. Now, they say that the shooter parked on a street nearby and then walked all the way down the street, looked at the house, and then went back to his vehicle where he grabbed a rifle, according to police, and started spraying the house. Uh, we believe that two homes were hit, according to police, as well as the dog that was in the front yard in the street police do have a lot of yellow markers usually those are indications of some sort of evidence such as shell casings we saw up to number 28 meaning they have 28 pieces of evidence possibly all shell casings here in the street uh, no one inside the home thankfully was hit but again that dog was hit in the leg according to police uh, they did have animal care services come out uh, and deal with the animal. I'm not sure if they're taking the animal in or what is happening, but uh, they did say again the dog was hit in the leg. They're still trying to figure out who is responsible for this. No description really given to us of that shooter, except it was someone who drove up here, walked down to the house and started shooting. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. All right, step outside this morning and notice Katrina was not wearing a jacket. Very, very warm and humid out there. We also have a little bit of mist. I've been kind of looking at this picture behind me over there live cam. You can see the four tens just a little got that sheen on it. 74 right now, so very, very warm. That bottom number has come up to the dew point, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere and uh, no sprinkles being reported at the airport right now. But last hour it was reporting some light rain. Yeah, 91 high temperature today and the humidity is going to be sticking around throughout the course of the day. The aquifer, no change yesterday. And as far as the allergens, molds on the moderate side, ragweed, fall elm are all low. So take a look at radar right now. And first of all, I mean, you look at this picture going, well, yeah, there's nothing out there, but you really got to kind of zoom in close to see uh, just a little bit of some uh, light little sprinkles. That's some clutter right there around the, the radar site out there in toward New Braunfels. But look at some of this right here is this just barely moves. I mean, these light little sprinkles not amounting to too much of anything enough, obviously, to make the roads kind of damp out there. Also, some fog now not as much around here as yesterday. Castroville seven miles visibility as well as Kerrville. And then there's more down to the southeast. Fredericksburg also has some fog, but like yesterday, it's going to thicken up in places as we approach sunrise. So just kind of keep that in mind. So 70s all around the area and humidity has has definitely come up around and we do like I said have moderate amount of mold out there now as far as the rest of the morning temperatures are going to stay pretty steady little mist little fog high today again 91 mostly sunny skies now the front's going to be moving through right around kickoff time we're still going to be very warm still going to be very humid starting off humidity will start to drop down uh, but it's going to be like I said a humid start and then very breezy overnight then we get the fall weather coming on in here. What about eclipse viewing? We're going to talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. 
All right, I'll oh, take sorry, the RJ. wheel from here, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, taking a look outside TransGuy traffic cameras here. We have 281 at the Cory traffic moving along pretty smooth there. 281 at St. Mary's traffic moving pretty well there in that area as well. As Mike mentioned, uh, I woke up and I did have a little bit of uh, a little bit of mist and rain on my uh, windshield. So something that drivers are going to have to sort of uh, have to think about this morning as we take a look at our city map and traffic moving along pretty good throughout the area. Now, interesting, there was a uh, reported crash a little bit south of downtown or a little bit uh, west, I guess, uh, southbound 35 at West Commerce Street. This was being reported on the San Antonio Fire Department page, not by TxDOT. Um, so they respond to several, a variety of things. So we'll see if this turns out to be anything, but it does not appear to be causing any major traffic delays at the moment, but still something that I've seen being reported uh, by the fire department uh, at the moment. And then I uh, want to let you know about some ongoing construction on the far west side. Uh, reason I bring this up as opposed to some of the other construction we see here is because we did have the two main lanes there blocked at northbound 1604 at Culebra Road, but traffic appears to be uh, getting along pretty good in that area there. I'll check out the camera and see if uh, crews have cleared out that area. But uh, the rest of the way, things are looking pretty good. It's a good start for our Friday morning. We'll let you update it. Uh, we'll keep you updated on any sort of changes. Hopefully it uh, stays smooth sailing throughout our five o'clock hour. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police say a suspect is on the run following a stabbing overnight. Police say a man was leaving an apartment in the 500 block of North General McMullen around 10 o'clock last night when he saw some teenagers he thought were laughing at him. That's when a fight broke out. Police say during the fight, a 15 year old boy was stabbed in the chest with either a bottle or a knife. The suspect got away and the victim was taken to the hospital. With all the unrest in the Middle East right now, both of the White House and local leaders are on the lookout for potential danger. San Antonio Police Department is making it clear there has been no credible threat in our region, but they are asking everyone to be vigilant. Meanwhile, the Jewish Federation of San Antonio is taking a stand against the war in Israel. The organization wants to raise $1 million, and then the Bar Yadin Family Foundation will match it, doubling the dollars to $2 million. It's it's unbelievable the 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 chaos that's going on there, and people ask me, "What can I do?" I say, "Well, this is what we can do." Now, all of that money will go towards helping the victims with items like clothing, toiletries, and tents, as well as sleeping bags, since many have lost their homes. Now, to the latest on the war in the Middle East, here's a live look at Jerusalem. Israel's military is urging more than a million people living in northern Gaza to leave that area within the next 24 hours. The evacuation alerts come amid Israel's strikes against Hamas after the militants stormed Israeli neighborhoods a week ago, killing at least 1,200 people, including at least 22 Americans. Since then, more than 1,500 Palestinians have also died in retaliatory strikes. Now, as ABC's Faith Abube reports, the Biden administration says it will begin evacuating thousands of American citizens in the region starting today. This morning, new signs that Israel may be on the verge of escalating its retaliatory strikes against Hamas with a ground offensive in Gaza. The Israeli Defense Forces on social media overnight, calling on all residents of Gaza City to evacuate their homes within the next 24 hours and move south for their own protection. The area under unrelenting and devastating Israeli airstrikes since Hamas militants crossed the border seven days ago and brutally killed at least 1,200 people in Israel. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken describing to ABC News horrifying images the Israeli government released showing some of the slaughtered victims. A young infant riddled with bullets, a family hugging each other in a death embrace having been burned to death beheaded soldiers, more. It, it almost defies human comprehension precisely because it's not human. The Biden administration says it's working to free at least 17 Americans still missing, possibly being held as hostages by Hamas. Meantime, the administration beginning the evacuation of thousands of U.S. citizens stuck in Israel as the war intensifies. And today, law enforcement agencies across the country are stepping up security after a former Hamas leader called for a global day of rage. So far, though, we are told no specific or credible threats have been reported. In Washington, Faith Abube. ABC News.
Back here in Texas, a shooting up in Huntsville ends with a suspect dead and a police officer recovering in the hospital leading up to the shooting yesterday. Officers were dispatched to an apartment complex where a man was reportedly acting erratically and had a firearm. The suspect was shot and pronounced dead at the scene. An officer later identified as Sergeant Kyle Dockery was shot several times after surgery. Huntsville police said in a statement that Dockery is now in stable condition. The Texas Rangers are now investigating the shooting. A bus driver in Smithtown, New York, ha was fired after drinking an alcoholic beverage while driving students home from school. In an emotional interview, she said it was all a big misunderstanding. When heading out to work on Wednesday, Amalhana says she grabbed what she thought was a regular seltzer, but it was a white claw. She says she has trouble tasting because she is undergoing chemotherapy, so she did not taste any alcohol in it. However, when someone spotted the hard seltzer in her cup holder on the bus, she was immediately removed. After an investigation, police say she did not realize it was an alcoholic beverage and no charges will be filed. 510, 74 degrees on your Friday morning. And with the eclipse happening tomorrow, just ahead, we're going to show you where some of the biggest areas and some of the biggest watch parties are happening across the San Antonio area. Outside with live cam as we're waking up on a Friday morning. I, RJ's not alone. I saw some sprinkles on my windshield this morning, but they did end as I got closer to downtown. Also be aware tomorrow as the eclipse is happening, be careful as you're driving. There are going to be distracted drivers and maybe people parking in unusual areas to take a look. 514, it's game day. Fan favorite Jeremy Sohan says he's ready for tonight when the Spurs host the Miami Heat at the Frost Bank Center. He's been out of action due to soreness. Played on March 22nd at Milwaukee after he missed the Spurs' final nine games last season with knee soreness. As a rookie, he played in 56 games and averaged 11 points per contest. He says it's definitely nice to have one year of NBA experience on his resume. Game begins at 6.30 p.m. Undefeated in conference play, UTSA will host UAB in the Roadrunners first ever athletic uh, American Athletic Conference home game tomorrow night. UTSA opened conference play last weekend, winning at Temple 49-34. When it comes to UTSA and UAB, the Blazers lead the all-time series 4-3. But the Roadrunners have won the last two matchups in dramatic fashion. You know, each and every time we play those guys, they, they give us their best. We give them their best. So it's always a great game. Um, I definitely encourage everybody to go out there and support us. It's going to be an exciting game coming out to the last play for sure. Um, it's just those guys, are they're, they're always good. They're always solid. And uh, I know, we know we're going to get their best. So it'll be a good one. 12. Former John Jay quarterback Jacob Zeno is the UAB Dragons starting QB. So two of the best quarterbacks to come from our area will face off when Harris and Zeno Take the field tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at the Alamo Dome. UTSA is favored over Alabama Birmingham by nine points. Very good. Good luck there. Time now, 516 and 74 degrees for now. It's all time for tomorrow's annular eclipse. Up next, there are several big places hosting watch parties, and we're going to show you what they're planning to make sure our eclipse viewer has a great experience. Imagine a world with no drama. I haven't signed Jody's card yet. At 4imprint, finding the promotional products you need to create a memorable moment is an easy mission. Our expert team will take care of every detail to make your success a certainty. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. My name is Josh Sanabria, and I'm the owner at Isla Veterinary Boutique Hospital. I was five, six years of age, and I knew I was going to be a vet. Once Alexandra called me to let me know that Bank of America had approved my loan, it was important to me. We not only just provide the financing piece, we do everything that we can to surround them with the right people. All you need is a perfect, amazing team that will guide you through the right steps to be successful. And that's what Bank of America was for me. The countdown to the annular solar eclipse continues this week, and residents in South Central Texas are getting excited. That's right. Meteorologist Mia Montgomery shows us a few fun and safe options so you can witness this astronomical event. From San Antonio to Uvalde to the Hill Country and beyond, there are plenty of watch party options to attend for the annular solar eclipse happening on October 14th. Take Bandera. 
Their Natural History Museum will be hosting the Dino Solar Eclipse event, where glasses, crafts, and tours will be offered to those who reserve tickets among their many dinosaur statues. We have different events to keep the children entertained, and also with the uh, astronomer talking about different issues and answering any questions. At Weston Uvalde County, a weekend's worth of events will be taking place in Uvalde, Garner State Park, and Concan. Both fun and educational activities, food trucks, live entertainment, and more will be a part of the Stellar Fest starting as early as Friday. It's just a beautiful place to escape to, watch this awesome phenomenon happen, and then enjoy the concerts and the activities and things that we have going on. Back here in San Antonio, places like the Zoo, Scobie Education Center, the Museum, Natural Bridge Caverns, and various hotel groups will be hosting watch parties for the solar eclipse. Dr. Richard Kissel, Chief Program Officer at the Museum, knows how unique of an event this, plus the total eclipse in April, will be. It, it gives you a perspective and a realization that we're part of something so much bigger. You know, we're on this planet that's revolving around the sun, so for everything to line up perfectly for an eclipse, I think is really amazing and can really add perspective about where we are in the solar system and the universe. Many of these events will be supplying the appropriate eyewear, but if you want to snag some eclipse glasses for you and your family, we have those details plus a full breakdown of other eclipse events happening on our website, ksat.com. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, I'm still looking for those glasses. They're getting harder and harder to find. Of course, we're only a day away now. All our coverage starts tomorrow, beginning at 9 a.m. right here on Case Hat 12. If you want to see more of our stories leading up to the big event, scan the QR code on your screen. Yeah, it's going to be very busy. Could we have? There's a lot of watch parties happening around town, and a mm -hmm. lot of people just gathering just to you yep. know to go outside and look yeah. together with those glasses. And we've noticed something on the screen behind us yeah. here. Yes, we do. Yeah, we have some flashing lights there. As uh, we have a couple of crashes uh, being reported right now, guys. So this is a look at our Trans Guy traffic camera, a little bit south of downtown. You uh, I-35 there, northbound at US 90. So you can see that uh, we do have a crash being reported. Trying to figure out uh, just how severe this is or how major this is. Uh, I just actually asked Transguide uh, to put this camera up for us because it just popped up on TechStot's page. So uh, we're going to try and get a little bit more information as to what is going on there. It looks like at least we have one car there off to the side with their hazard lights on and uh, we have an 18 wheeler here as well. Not sure uh, what exactly is going on there. So we'll continue to get more information on this, but this is definitely something that drivers here are going to have to be aware about as we take a closer look and you can see it's already causing some sort of delays here in this area. Again, northbound lanes at Powell Street. So that's a little bit north of right there, that intersection between uh, where basically I-10, 35, US 90. So again, very busy area there. So something our drivers are going to have to keep in mind and uh, continuing with what's already been kind of a busy start to our morning. We have another crash being reported northbound lanes at Walsham. Uh, they're on 35, so around the Windcrest area. So if you're headed out in this area, just keep caution. I will, uh, I will check the Transguide traffic cameras here in a bit and see if there's anything of note in this area as well. Again, this has just been reported by TxDOT as well. So we're already off to kind of a busy start. Make sure to be cautious, especially if you're going to head out in this area south of downtown. Mike, how are things looking outside? Eh, kind of kind of murky. You're going to get to that in a second. But tomorrow, eclipse viewing weather. We are going to be starting off low 60s, getting up to 68 at, at 10 o'clock. And then as the moon passes in front of the sun, it's going to be like a thick, dark cloud, if you will, passing in front of the sun. So temperatures are going to be dropping down a few degrees and then bouncing back. Now that's here in town and we're going to have better weather. Here is one of the computer models. First of all, going through today, we clear on out and then the front starts to work its way through here uh, later on. It's going to be early evening hours. Now, as this goes into tomorrow, we'll have some morning clouds left over. This is the one computer model that is leaning toward the cloudier side, especially off to the west. So we're at mid morning eclipse begins. There are still going to be just a couple of clouds left over here. And like I said, better weather here in town, but we are going to be seeing a few extra clouds hanging around here, especially over toward the, the Rio Grande. So that's uh, out to the west may not be as good of viewing weather 
tomorrow for the eclipse. Here's what's going on right now. And as you can see, we do have just some of those light little sprinkles that are showing up on radar. It is definitely not much at all, but just enough obviously to make the roads kind of damp out there. Plus we have some fog, not much in our areas. Castroville seven miles visibility, but if you go down to the uh, southeast, there is more there. Dew point temperatures have definitely gone up compared to this time yesterday, five to 10 degrees on average. And the humidity is going to be sticking around throughout most all of the day. Then the front moves through right about dinner time. Just after that, the dry air comes on in here and we've got some beautiful fall weather in store for the next few days. So we've got a couple little sprinkles around here this morning. Temperatures continue to move up into the mid 80s, already well above normal by noon. And then we top off at 91 today. Plenty of humidity around here and a lot more in the way of some sunshine. Then we go into tonight and that's when the front moves on through here. Temperatures will not drop down that dramatically initially behind this front. The humidity will be dropping down as well. Tomorrow, 81 degrees after the eclipse and then beautiful fall weather. Cool mornings, nice afternoons through the middle of next week. Another front late next week. We'll be back. In this morning's GMA First Look, Secrets of Costco. We love the fact that you never know what you're going to find when you, when you go there. David and Susan Schwartz have been researching the ins and outs of Costco's from around the world for more than five years, all in their new book, The Joy of Costco. And this morning, they're sharing what they found with GMA. Costco sells half the world's cashews. They sell seven times more hot dogs than all Major League Baseball stadiums combined which is mind blowing. The Schwartzes also say, pay attention to other services like the pharmacy. Unbelievable discounts on pharmacy. Costco takes the actual cost of the generic and marks it up 10 to 14%. And the difference is, 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 quite, is quite significant. And if you have a pet, they do pet drugs as well. We'll have much more secrets from Costco coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. 530, 74 degrees. Lawmakers in Washington just can't get things together when it comes to selecting a new House Speaker. Why one of the top front runners for the position doesn't have enough votes. Here at home, are you ready for Zoo Boo? Up next, we'll take you along for the ride at the San Antonio Zoo for their annual non-scary Halloween celebration. Making headlines this morning, Republicans in Washington say a few holdouts are preventing the election of a new House Speaker. Withdrawing my name as a candidate for the speaker designee. Uh, our conference still has to come together and is not there. Up next, who Republicans are turning to now and why a contender for the speakership says he's still optimistic. And trending right now on KSAT.com this morning, Family Dollar issues a huge recall of over-the-counter meds and toothpaste. The recall includes name brand antacids, eye drops, cold medicines, foot powder, and mouthwash. You can see that full list of items online right now. And outside with live cam, we've got warmer weather on tap, then a cold front, and then a pretty good looking weekend overall. Mike has specifics in a moment. Good morning. It's Friday. It is October 13th. Wishing everybody good luck on this Friday the 13th. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Uh, definitely like a lot more humid this morning. Yeah. It felt like fall was over, but I but I know things will change. Things are going to be changing later on tonight, but throughout the rest of today, it is going to be a summer like so not very lucky as far as weather today because it is so warm and humid out there and we've had some little mist and sprinkles if you will it almost looks like 410 is still damp over there by the airport and there's nothing being reported right now but last hour the airport uh, was saying there was a little bit of light rain and mist out there. 74 degrees, so we're more than 10 above normal. And that number, dew point, measure moisture in the atmosphere, has really come up this morning. You're going to notice it when you step outside. This is a little bit of clutter around the radar site up there, but you can see just these little sprinkles. They're kind of moving or sort of sitting still, so there is just some of this... Um, yeah, whatever you want to call it, mist, uh, something like that. It's enough to make the roads damp out there. Not a whole lot of fog right now. Hint of it around New Braunfels, a hint in Castroville, but there is definitely more down to the southeast. Beeville at just a quarter mile visibility, some around Fredericksburg. And we're going to have to watch this over the course of the next couple of hours. Remember yesterday we had 
patches of it here and there at this time. And then once the sun came up and going in toward the eight o'clock hour, we had a bit more fog it's temperatures. Everybody with just one exception is in the seventies right now. A lot of humidity out there, but like I said, that will be changing later on tonight. Molds on the moderate side, ragweed and fall elm are low and got the morning fog mist, then sunny and hot, hot and humid out there. Now the front's going to move through this evening just after dinner time, about seven, eight o'clock. Winds are going to be shifting around. It's going to be windy tonight, and then the humidity will begin to drop down. It's not like it's going to drop immediately. It's not one of those where, you know, it'll, it'll drop 10, 15, 20 degrees as soon as the front moves through. It's going to be a slower process tonight, but it will be more comfortable later on tonight. Then tomorrow, windy in the morning, couple of leftover clouds, especially off to the west. So it's going to be for folks well out to the west, iffy if, as far as eclipse viewing, but then great in the afternoon and beautiful fall weather all the way through most of next week. Another front looks like it's going to be heading in here by late next week. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, still got those uh, problems out there? Yes, we do. So not a uh, not a very unlucky start here for some of our drivers here on our fourth of uh, Friday the 13th here. As we start our morning commute, you can see that we have a, a pretty good crash here at 35 at US 90. So this is the this is actually the southbound lanes. It was being reported earlier uh, by textiles and northbound lanes, but then actually when I looked at the I was like, that doesn't really seem right. So this actually is the southbound lanes. Got that confirmed with trans guy just a little while ago. And you can see that we have at least uh, one 18 wheeler here off to the shoulder, the side of the road. And we have another vehicle there with the hazard, hazard lights on. And uh, we are being told that the two exit ramps to 90 right now have been shut down as officials uh, try and take care or investigate what exactly is going on there at the moment. So again, let's take a look at our maps and see exactly how this is affecting traffic in southbound I-35 right there at US 90, so we know this very busy area to begin with. We have a uh, Nogalitos, which runs, um, which runs in this area, so that might be an option if you are coming from the downtown area south to US 90. But again, something that we're going to keep an eye on throughout the rest of our morning. One more crash to let you know about there. Northbound I-35 at Walsham Road on the near northeast side. Still have a crash being reported there. I was looking at the cameras earlier. Doesn't appear to be causing any major traffic delays at the moment, but something that our drivers in that area need to be aware about. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, sir. Call it curse of Friday the 13th, or maybe the whole month of October. House Republicans still can't agree on a new House Speaker. Their nominee says he is out of the running because he couldn't get enough votes. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, some party members sound very frustrated. Isn't it childish? I mean, isn't it ridiculous? Republicans say a few holdouts are preventing the election of a new House Speaker. That has some in the party voicing frustration, especially after this twist last night. I'm withdrawing my name as a candidate for the Speaker-designee. Our conference still has to come together and is not there. Arguably, no one understands that better than the last man to hold the gavel. Oh, we don't want this. You know what's validating to me is how do you allow 4% of the conference to do this to the entire country? The person behind Representative Kevin McCarthy's ouster says he has no regrets. I think it was the right call and I think we're going to come out of uh, this process stronger, a fighting Republican force. A contender for the speakership says he's optimistic too. I think we'll get, I think we'll get there. The question is when. The death toll is climbing in Gaza, and politicians in both parties say they want to support Israel now. When Israel and the United States need one another, it's moments like this where we step up. There always seems to be a small group that doesn't want to work with the team. I just want to get back to work and do my job. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Other news, NFL teams will unite for a show of support for Israel this week. All teams will hold a moment of silence before every week six game following the devastating Hamas attack on Israel. The display started last night when the Denver Broncos faced the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium. Earlier this week, the National Football League put out a statement saying that the NFL mourns the loss of innocent lives in Israel and strongly condemns all forms of terrorism. Mortgage rates are up for the fifth straight, straight week, according to Freddie Mac. And the 30-year fixed rate mortgage now averages 7.57%. Mortgage rates haven't been this high since December of 2000. Now, one year ago, the 30-year fixed rate was 6.92%. Did you see this dramatic finish? The Houston Cougars taking on the West Virginia Mountaineers last night. 20 seconds left. 
West Virginia down 35-32, fourth and 10 on the 50. West Virginia runs it in for a 50-yard touchdown. West Virginia leads 39-35, but then seven seconds left. Houston with one last opportunity with a Hail Mary. It's tipped and finally caught for a 49-yard touchdown. Houston wins it 41-39. What a game. I know. Very interesting. Time now, 540 and 74 degrees for now. The San Antonio Zoo is once again hosting its annual Zoo Boo event. Up next, what you and the kids will be able to enjoy at this non-scary Halloween event. And looking out there with live cam, it does not feel like October this morning, but we know things will change, and that's pretty exciting. We'll be checking in with Mike very soon. Just about 544 this morning, our Fall Family Adventure Series continues here on GMSA. Some of our GMSA producers took a trip to the San Antonio Zoo to check out Zubu. And here's part of their adventure. Check it out. It's a really exciting time to be at San Antonio Zoo, especially now because it's spooky season. And Zubu is sponsored by PNC Bank, and it's such a fun time because we have six realms that you can explore with roaming entertainment. We have live entertainment. We have different things that you can experience and free trick-or-treating. So there's something fun around every corner for absolutely everybody, but there's special merchandise and even special food. One of the fan favorites here. Uh, conchas in the style of a cupcake. We have uh, cauliflower wings, zombie brains is what we're calling them. Brunch burgers got hash brown, bacon, egg, and uh, a meat patty too as well too. So lots of fun going on there. Some spinach on the bottom. And up top here we got a fall, um, fall festive uh, flatbread for you. It's got some cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar, apples and a honey glaze with arugula on it. Got a little bacon in there too for fun. Come to Zubu experience it all. Come hungry. We're ready for it. We're here at one of our favorite places on GMSA, the Flamingo Pit. Look at them go. They are so magnificent. Every single day we do animal encounters where you guys can come see and meet some of our really cool animals during Zubu. We do it every single day. Meet our amazing mascot, Cowboy. He's super awesome. You'll see him all around the zoo, especially during our costume contests and our dance parties. He's around for a lot of that. We have Zubu going on right now all the way till October 31st, and all of this merch is available all around the zoo. So as you're walking around, make sure to check out all these really cool souvenirs that you could get, and all that money comes right back into conservation efforts to help us take care of our animals here, as well as animals all around the world, and really help us secure a future for wildlife. Come on down and make those memories, because you will definitely leave knowing more about animals and conservation, but also having an incredible time while doing so. So we invite you out. If you pay for a day, you get an entire year free. So come for Zubu, see Zoo Lights, come next summer because it's an incredible time and San Antonio Zoo is a beautiful place to be. Love the pumpkin there. That's yeah, kind of cool. Very nice. 546 on your Friday morning, 74 degrees. Let's look out there with Trans Guide. Still problems over at I-35 and 90, but here's a look at Loop 410 at Ingram North where things are moving. We're going to be checking in with RJ Marcus very soon. Welcome back, 549, and taking you outside Trans Guide traffic cameras. And good news here for our drivers south of downtown. We have seen that things have cleared up there at 35 at US 90. This was the southbound lanes of 35 at US 90. We saw uh, some pretty good activity here a little while ago, including 18 wheeler. Saw that 18 wheeler drive off. It looked like a uh, like an Amazon truck. So that's good news. Hopefully they get out and about and make their deliveries. But traffic now moving along pretty smooth in this area. Let's show you this uh, ongoing construction problem here on the far north northeast side. This is 35 southbound at Olympia Parkway. So overnight there was a lot of construction taking place here. Olympia to Topperwine Road. So this is something that uh, obviously is still an ongoing thing here in this area. You can see traffic has been backed up significantly here. No crash being reported, but again, just a lot of construction taking place there. 35 southbound at Olympia Parkway. Something to keep in mind if you have to head out here and you live in that area. The other thing we're following right now, 35 at Eisenhower. This was the crash that was being reported on northbound lanes of 35 at Walsham Road. Got TransGuide to put the camera up for us there at Eisenhower. Now they tell me it's off to the frontage road. You could do see some flashing lights there off to your right hand side. So it doesn't appear to be on the main lanes, but still causing a pretty good back up there in that area. And RJ, we were chatting earlier about just be mm -hmm. super vigilant tomorrow yes. during yeah. the eclipse. Yeah. People are going to be distracted looking up, maybe pedestrians as well, or people parking in yeah, unusual in places. Yeah, awkward spots, maybe trying to park on the sides of the yeah. roads and things like that just to kind of get a look if they could. So yeah, just be cautious out Be there. extra careful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, RJ. Yeah, something to look out for. 
Okay, um, homecoming season. Oh. We had somebody on the show the other day, a couple of weeks ago, that makes mums, and they were about five feet tall. Wow. Uh, this is, that's nothing compared to this out there at Smithson Valley. That's cool. Okay, so here's the door. Uh huh. That, so what's that doorway? Maybe eight feet, something like maybe, that. So maybe maybe even uh, nine, higher ten, than that. Yeah. Ten feet. Yeah. Wemby height. Cause look at that. Yeah, look at Wemby. <laughs> Wemby height. That for Wemby. So. <laughs> It's great, though. I love that. So thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. All right. It looks like 410 may still be a little damp. That kind of sheen from the uh, the headlights over there because there has been some light rain reported within the past couple of hours. And you can see there's still now nothing really right there by the airport per se, but some of these little uh, spots, little sprinkles that are moving on through here. So the roads are going to be damp out there this morning. Just keep that in mind. Plus, it is really humid. Temperatures are in the 70s. We're not going to be going any lower. And then we see some sunshine by noon, already up to 86 degrees, already well above the normal high. And it continues up into the low 90s today. And the humidity is going to be sticking around. So you're going to feel every bit of that 91 degrees. So here's the uh, computer model through this afternoon. Clouds do break up and then notice the line working its way on through here. Dinner time, early evening. Now this model, one or two models wants to squeeze out a sprinkle as that front moves through a kind of doubt. I mean, can't completely rule it out, but I'm not really buying into that too awfully much. Then we go into tomorrow and we'll have some clouds hanging around here in the morning. As we go into mid morning, still a few clouds kind of left over, especially off to the west. This particular computer model is leaning toward a little cloudier as we go into eclipse time at noon and then we'll have a lot more sunshine later on in the afternoon. Also tonight, once that front moves through, it is going to be on the breezy side with some gusts that are going to be well getting up there into the uh, 15 20 mile per hour range, especially later on this evening. But that's going to start to pull in the drier air as well. Now the air is not going to just as soon as the front moves through dry out completely, it'll be kind of a slow process throughout the night, but it's going to be more comfortable, say, toward the end of the game or later on this evening. Now, tomorrow, again, we start off with some clouds, 62, get up to 81 in the afternoon, and we will see temperatures dip a little bit as the moon goes in front of the sun, and that is going to be, like I said, right just before noontime. Then, after that, we have some great fall weather in store. We're going to be down in the 50s then throughout most all of next week for low temperatures getting up into the upper 70s by Sunday, Monday. And just when the humidity starts to return by Thursday, another front as is looking right now, obviously it's still a week away, but is going to start to work its way on through here and give us another chance of rain and maybe some cooler temperatures then for next week. And when was the last time I had two cool fronts on that seven day forecast? I do not remember. Two? Uh, that sounds April of this year. Oh, that, that would be fitting. I don't know. That's just a wild yeah. guess. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But I like that. I do too. We approve. Yes. Thank you, Mike. 554, <laughs> 74 degrees. So you're winning a lot of numbers. Pick 3530, three, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 3567, Fireball 5. Rest of your numbers there. Cash 5, 1, 2, 12, 13, 20. Texas 2 Step 4, 10, 11, 23, Bonus Ball 4. Good morning. Coming up here, our team is live in Jerusalem this morning, covering all the news breaking overnight on the war. Israel urging the evacuation of more than a million people from Gaza, with the region facing a humanitarian crisis. Officials in Israel and here in the U.S., meanwhile, on high alert, with Hamas calling for a, quote, day of rage. Also this morning, the new twist in the unprecedented race for Speaker of the House. What's next after Steve Scalise dropped out? That and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, San Antonio will have its first fentanyl walk in memory of lives destroyed by the drug. How mothers who lost their kids came together for the event. And the annular eclipse is almost here. We've got some fun ways you can watch it as it crosses over our area tomorrow. And checking Trans Sky, we've already had quite a few troubles on the roads. One of them's 35 Eisenhower area. RJ will get you up to speed coming up after the break. Israel calls for more than a million Palestinians living in the northern part of the Gaza Strip to evacuate within 24 hours. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. Back here at home, San Antonio police say a suspect's on the run after an overnight stabbing. What we were able to learn from the scene in the past few hours. 
And let's look out there with a live cam this morning. We are starting at 74 degrees, a lot more humid on this Friday the 13th. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your Friday, October 13th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you've had a good weekend. It's been a pretty busy morning as far as the roadways. That's right. RJ Marquez is in for Stephen on this Friday morning and has the very latest. All right, guys. Yeah, very busy to start your Friday morning commute. And the biggest thing we're following right now is this uh, crash being reported on the Axis uh, Road here for northbound 35 at Eisenhower. So the crash being reported up at uh, Walsham Road, but you can see that we have uh, police lights, police activity in this area there. So good news is that it is not affecting some of the main lanes of traffic here, but definitely something that our drivers here are going to need to kind of be careful about if you're headed out in this area. As we take a look at maps, you can see that right now this is indicating traffic still moving along pretty smooth as far as the main lanes there of uh, northbound 35 at Walsham Road right before you hit 410. But again, we have a pretty serious situation going on there uh, a little bit north of Eisenhower Road. So let's check in with our Katrina Weber who is live at the scene and she has more details for us. Katrina. Well, good morning. Yes, it's a pedestrian who was hit here either on the access road or just over on the uh, entrance ramp to Walsham Road, northbound 35. It's causing a minor detour uh, for drivers there blocked off here. Uh, just before Walsham, and they're actually using the parking lot here to get around the situation. Uh, I talked to witnesses and, and police. They say that a man was either walking on the access road or on the entrance ramp when he was hit by a car. The driver did stop, uh, has been talking to police. Uh, they say it doesn't look like he did anything wrong, that he was not able to see a pedestrian on the highway or on the highway access road. The man who was hit was taken to a hospital, and police tell us he's in critical condition. Condition. He has some pretty serious injuries. Again, this is not affecting the main lanes of the highway, but it does have this northbound access road shut down just past uh, Eisenhower. So a uh, minor detour for drivers. Again, they're using the parking lot to get around this crash. No word yet on when this will clear up. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. All right, it is very warm, very humid out there, and just looking at 410, and I really can't tell if the road is still damp, although it does look like it with the uh, kind of the reflection of the headlights there. We've had some light rain reported out at the airport within the past couple of hours, and as you can see, there is some of this just very, very light precipitation being picked up in western parts of the city, over there in toward parts of the, uh, the hill country. Nothing specific right there around the airport right now. This is a little bit of a clutter up there closer to the radar site, but there's just a little mist out there, even if it is too light to be picked up on radar. Also, there's a hint of fog, Castroville, Bernie, Kerrville, and then especially down to the southeast, Beeville, pea soup fog right now. So if you're heading down 37, you are going to be running into that, and we'll have to be on the lookout for more fog developing as we approach sunrise and just after that, similar to what the situation was yesterday. Temperatures mid 70s, even a couple of low 70s out there, but very warm, well above normal by a good 10 to almost 15 degrees. Plenty of humidity with these dew points well up there in the 70s. Now that's going to be changing, but not till later on this evening. Molds on the moderate side, little bits of uh, ragweed and fall elm. Temperatures stay steady or continue going up this morning, and then we make it up into the mid 80s already by noon with more sunshine. So well above normal at noon. We top off at 91 today. A lot of sunshine and a lot of humidity. It's going to be hot and humid today. Front moves through early evening, say right around the start of football tonight. And humidity is not going to drop off just like dropping off a cliff. It'll be a slow drying process, but at least it will be eventually more comfortable. Also, it is going to be breezy tonight. What about the weekend? Got some fall weather in store and we'll check out the eclipse viewing weather late tomorrow morning. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say a suspect is on the run after an overnight stabbing. Police tell us that a man was leaving an apartment in the 500 block of North General McMullen around 10 last night when he saw some teams who he thought were laughing at him, and that's when a fight broke out. Police say during that fight, a 15-year-old boy was stabbed in the chest with either a bottle or a knife. That suspect got away, and the victim was taken to the hospital. 
In your morning headlines, new questions about who can unite the Republican Party after Majority Leader Steve Scalise suddenly withdrew from the race to replace Kevin McCarthy. Scalise won the nomination this week, but some House members have voiced concern about his health as he battles blood cancer. The House has been paralyzed without a leader unable to pass new aid for Israel, frustrating many members of the Republican conference. Republicans will meet again this morning to try to find a consensus. One House member said, quote, right now, the Lord Jesus himself couldn't get the 217 votes needed to become speaker, end quote. Now to the latest on the war in the Middle East. Here's a live look at the Western Wall in Jerusalem this morning. Israel's military urging more than a million people living in the northern Gaza Strip to leave the area within the next 24 hours. The evacuation alerts come almost a week after militants stormed Israeli neighborhoods, killing at least 1,200 people, including at least 22 Americans. Since then, more than 1,500 Palestinians have also died in retaliatory Israeli strikes. As ABC's Faith Ububay reports, the White House says it will start evacuating thousands of American citizens in the region today. This morning, new signs that Israel may be on the verge of escalating its retaliatory strikes against Hamas with a ground offensive in Gaza. The Israeli Defense Forces on social media overnight, calling on all residents of Gaza City to evacuate their homes within the next 24 hours and move south for their own protection. The area under unrelenting and devastating Israeli airstrikes since Hamas militants crossed the border seven days ago and brutally killed at least 1,200 people in Israel. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken describing to ABC News horrifying images the Israeli government released showing some of the slaughtered victims. A young infant riddled with bullets, a family hugging each other in a death embrace having been burned to death beheaded soldiers, more. It, it almost defies human comprehension precisely because it's not human. The Biden administration says it's working to free at least 17 Americans still missing, possibly being held as hostages by Hamas. Meantime, the administration beginning the evacuation of thousands of U.S. citizens stuck in Israel as the war intensifies. And today, law enforcement agencies across the country are stepping up security after a former Hamas leader called for a global day of rage. So far, though, we are told no specific or credible threats have been reported. In Washington, Faith Abube. ABC News. 608, 74 degrees. And after the break, the annual eclipse is almost here. We're going to have some fun ways you can watch it as it crosses over the Alamo City. But first things first, and that's getting through a Friday the 13th. We're hoping we're all lucky today as we take a live look at Loop 410 and San Antonio International Airport. Your forecast and another update on traffic coming up.